Well, Rob had a fairly normal upbringing and I feel like I'm a fairly normal guy, but I found my passion in life and that's uh, building boards and uh, just building anything really. I just love it. I started building boards around 1985, 86, and the reason why I did build my very first board is because short board windsurfing was just coming on the scene, and there just wasn't any boards around that suited me, so I decided to make my own. I'll never forget it. I, I bought a Clark Blank from a, uh, a longtime supplier of mine. They still supply me with a lot of my materials. And uh, at the time I was working up in Seashell with my father building a house and uh, I shaped this thing on the construction site. That very first board worked out incredibly well and um, I think it's still somewhere, collecting moss somewhere, but it was a great board for at the time. I started building Robert's boards um, in my parents' garage, and um, man, that poor garage, I, I, it was a really nice house, and we had just built it for our family, and I just destroyed the place. It had overspray and foam everywhere, and I was driving my parents crazy, but my friends started wanting boards, and I, I just started making them for myself, and I made three boards and a friend wanted one and he wanted to come work with me building boards and it was just all this stuff was going on in my parents garage and I started selling these things and it was super fun it was totally my passion I was addicted to windsurfing I loved building boards and it was just such a craft and such a cool thing because every board you make would get better and better and better so it was just like this addiction I asked my dad, I said, hey, you know, you mind if I just keep building boards this summer? And he goes, yeah, well, you can build boards. So I built boards and it never stopped. And I just sort of went with these ideas I had and it just kept building and building and building and, and moved into the very first carbon fiber epoxy boards and no one was making them at the time and I kind of figured out how to make them. Um, just through trial and error and uh, a whole lot of work. Even to this day, our, our techniques, I, I believe, are quite a lot different than most uh, board builders because I learned this stuff on my own. I never read about it. Custom board builders were quite plentiful in the 90s. Like, that's where you got your, your short boards from. And uh, production stuff was just starting. Like, it was just starting to come out. And, the, there was a lot of failures in, in production, you know, there was, uh, you know, boards would delaminate, they'd break, they were just not getting their act together. So custom boards were really what you wanted in windsurfing at the time. You know, but as production came along and they started doing a better and better job, you know, 
a lot of these custom board builders sort of disappearing because they couldn't compete against the prices that were offered from overseas. Like it's a, it's a given, you just can't go up against somebody that's making hardly any money during a work week. It's never been like a super awesome money maker, but it's, it's proven to me that it's been worth millions as far as my lifestyle. Like it's worth so much to me and I don't think you can buy that. We have put everything into this thing. Like it's our heart and soul. It's our, it's the construction, the materials. We buy the best of everything. There's no compromises here ever. When we're on the water, we just, it's, it's not about just being on the water anymore. It's about being on the water and what's the board doing? Why is it doing this? Why is it doing that? So it's an endless thought pattern. And it's been my lifestyle since I've been a very young man. And it still is now. Like we go out there and we are addicted, you know, and we just feel like the sky's still the limit, the creation is still there, and the passion is still there, it's never left. My biggest achievement in uh, board building has, it hasn't been my name personally to be out there as Rob Mulder, but seeing the boards on the water, seeing my friend Salem and all the hooping and hollering and screaming out there because they're having the greatest time and all the top level guys that we have supported in the World Cup and around the world, it's been incredible. Like seeing the boards out there is an amazing feeling and just the friends that we make through this whole thing like we're all a big happy family it just seems like you go out there and everyone comes in happy and they're talking about that jibe they made did you see that jibe <laughs> where i'd like to see roberts in the coming years is just like every other year just to keep continuing with this process of innovation and you know passion and all that we need to have that to make this whole thing work it's not a money machine. It'd be nice to be making more money, but in the future, you know, we still want to keep this going. I will never stop building boards. It is my true passion, and um, I need to do it. It has to be done. Uh, well, here's Otter. He's our, um, <laughs> he controls everything in the shop pretty much, I think. He's the most important person and is, uh, he truly helps out with the people walking in.